But that's that's where they got the ID from, bro. Diddy Kong Racing. Which they should make a they should make a new one. Or remake it. I don't give a fuck, bro. I would I would I would remake I would play a remake, bro. Diddy Kong Racing was fucking fantastic, bro. It was such a fun racer. Master on the beat, let's get it. I mean, it looks pretty. It's not an interesting track. That's a shame. It looks pretty though. A opinionated video of Mario Kart DS. Yo, all right, hold on, hold on. In my personal opinion, Mario Kart DS is the best Mario Kart. Like, if they, if they would remake Mario Kart DS, it would be better than any other Mario Kart that I've played, at least. I haven't played, like, Double Dash. I haven't played, like, um... No, I think I only didn't play Double Dash. Yeah, I've, I haven't played Double Dash. That's it, so... Yeah. So, let's 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 see how, how these opinions are made, all right? What, what kind of opinions does this man have? And are they correct or not? Bro, already the intro DS, menu, on by you, fantastic. And Patreon support by people such as Holly Pops, Anthony Combs, Silver Skeleton, and Abby Knutson. Wait, that's how it looks? I do not remember it looking this trash. Such as Holly Pops, Anthony Combs, Silver Skeleton, and Abby Knutson. Thank you. We what fuck are those? One of my most recent poll, and I already did a video on that, but a lot of you really wanted me to do Mario Kart DS. So I figured I'd film the gap while I work on my Colossal Mario Bros video. And holy crap, it has been years since I touched this bad boy. I know Mario Kart DS might not seem too special in the modern lens, but you have to consider the air this came out. These days, you really don't need to make any compromises when it comes to portable gaming. True. Especially with the Switch, any Nintendo game you'd want to play at home, you can now take with you on the go. Cap. Cap, all right. Try playing Breath of the Wild on 1080p. Try it. <laughs> Try it, bro. Shit lags. Shit's running on 30 FPS. Flagship fucking game for the Switch. Shit's trash. <laughs> Can't even run 60 FPS, bro. Breath of the Wild is garbage. Garbage. The optimization is trash, bro. Absolute ass. Previous portable Mario Kart looked like this. So again, at the time, it didn't feel like any. Oh, the GBA was fire too. In Shut up. This is basically as good as we could have asked for in regards to a portable Mario Kart. It's epic, Technical bro. limitations aside, another reason we didn't feel like we were making any compromises with a handheld Mario Kart was because a DS entry in particular added so many things that have since become staples of the series: retro tracks, online racing, mission mode. Okay, that last one never came back. I was about to say, bro, to mission day, mode never came I back. Mario Kart DS has the most content. Sure, Mario Kart. Hey, 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 hey. You, you're forgetting a big, day. big deal Mario that Mario Kart DS had, bro. Look, you see that shit? You see that? Yeah, yeah. Customized emblems, bro. Where the fuck is that? Where the fuck did that go? The little customization you did have. And that's gone. Yeah, you can change your cars and shit and like wheels and whatnot but i want to be i want to rock my own logo bro this was fire my logo was a big <laughs> now that i think about it <laughs> oh imagine going online and your your car has a gigantic cock <laughs> on the front of the fucking car oh that would be amazing yeah you know Scratch the scratch that bro. Bring this shit back, alright? I want I want to put a cock on my car. Hell yes. <laughs> I'd argue Mario Kart DS has the most content. Sure, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe might have more characters and courses right out the gate, but for one, DS has a battle mode I'd actually want to play. Yeah, but bro, more characters. And Let, let's be honest here, right? Which, which characters are really cool? Like, which characters do actually people use, right? So we got Mario, Luigi, all right? Those will get used. Peach, Daisy, I see, I see those. I see her. I see um, Ros Rosalia, right? Yeah. Then we got. Taniku fucking Mario and fucking Cat Peach. So unnecessary. You could have just given it the skin to Mario and Peach. This is so unnecessary. They ha don't have any different skills. They don't have any different stats. They have nothing different, right? So these are wasteful characters because they could have just placed them in skins. Then we got Yoshi. They, 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 they prove that they have skins, you know? Yoshi has skins. He can just 
change his color. Why can't every character do that? What, whatever. Regardless. So we got Toad, right? I see people sometimes play Toad. Koopa Troopa. I never see Koopa Troopa. Never. Koopa Troopa never gets played, bro. I never see him online. Uh, Shy Guy. Also, rarely. Whatever this dude is called. Rarely. Toadette. Fucking hate this bitch. Every single time this bitch is in front of me, she, she pulls some bullshit. King Boo. Not really. These two fuckers. They're trash. These two fuckers. Or three fuckers. They're trash. Everyone, everyone who plays baby characters are trash, bro. I don't care. They're always trash. They can't write for shit. And we got golden and like gold peach. Gold, golden, pink, peach, whatever. Again, skin. Skin. Skin, bro. If you have more skins in the game, it would be even better. Even better, bro. That's why I like playing Yoshi. Because he can do different colors. Then we got Wario, bro. Wario. My man smashes everyone to the side, bro. If Wario is in the game, you better, you know, you want, you don't want to move. Well, fuck you, bitch. You're going to move. Waluigi. I hate Waluigi because ev every single person on the line plays this bitch-ass motherfucker, bro. Same card, same dumb-ass tiny goddamn wheels. And then, like, this fucking character. Then we got... Uh, DK, bro. DK is valid. I like DK. DK players are valid as well. All right. Well, get, regardless of that, she, what Dashi says, all right. DK players are good. All right. DK. All right. Donkey Kong. He's valid. Then we got Bowser players. They're valid too. Then we got Dry Bones. They're the superior race. All right. Everyone who plays Dry Bones are mo morally superior than everyone else. All right. So if you play Dry Bones <clears throat> like me, you are superior. All right. Bowser Jr. Nobody plays him, all right? He is fantastic. I like him, all right? He plays just like Dry Bones. That's why I like him. All right. Dry Bowser. Pretty much no one uh, uses him. I have barely seen him. somebody use him. Lenny or Lemmy or whatever the fuck this thing guy's called. Nope. Never seen him. This guy. Never seen him. This girl. Never seen him. This... Er, never seen him. Never seen him. Never seen him. I've seen him quite a lot. That's true. I have seen quite a lot. Inklings. Who the fuck plays Inklings? Nobody. Nobody, bro. I've, I've never seen an Inkling in, the, in online. Never. Then we got Link. You know, Link are valid. You know, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they are. Then we got Villagers. I, I see them sometimes. And we got the, well, we got the stupid fucking bitch ass dog, bro. And then we got the me character. Like... Am I missing something? Why can't we just play like, I don't know, a Goomba, all right? I want to play as a Goomba, all right? Instead of like this bitch as fucking Mario and Peach, bro. I want a Goomba. I want to play as, uh, I don't know, a fucking Chain Chomp. Um, what, what other characters are there, are there like that would be cool? Like those fucking dragon motherfuckers that, that were in like Mario World 2 or some shit, bro. Bring those back. Um... Who else? You got like, um, you got like that, that's, uh, like from all these, uh, Bowser fucking spawns, right? You don't take, you don't put the best one in. Pom Pom, bro. The fucking ninja Shino, uh, Shinobu, uh, no, not Shinobu. Fuck. Kun Kunoichi, bro. Mario characters. I bet I'm gonna find some that were like, oh yeah, absolutely. There's sh they should be in in there. Bro! Piranha plant. Oh man, they have a they have an item. I guess I can't really do that. Yeah. Birdo bro! Birdo! Look! Birdo! Can we just get a normal picture? Oh, fuck it. Here. Birdo bro. Why is holy fuck, what the f okay. <laughs> oh shit! Hey, we don't, we did not, that did, nobody saw that, all right, that was not, nope, mm -mm, nope, that didn't happen. All right, so Birdo, bro, I guess I have to be a bit more careful. <laughs> Shit. Diddy Kong is in the game. Diddy Kong is not in the game? What? Well, there you go. Diddy Kong, alright? Diddy Kong, boom. Needs to be in there. 
got Birdo, we got Funk Kong, we got Diddy Kong, bro. Stuff like that. Then we got bitch ass motherfuckers like Inkling. Nobody plays. These two gold motherfuckers, bro. They could be skins. I don't know. It's dumb. And courses right out the gate. But for one, DS has a battle mode I'd actually want to play. <laughs> And that mission mode really rounds out the experience. So going back, I'm going to be fairly critical. This was my very first DS game ever. In fact, it's the game my DS came with. And I don't want hmm. to sound like a nostalgia blinded baby. So if I start critiquing certain components, and I will, because I want to be fair. <gasps> Rob, yo, Rob, I don't even forgot about him. Like even when I'm positive as hell, like I was for a resort, for example, there's always a handful of people to get real upset about my few unenthusiastic comments. So I'll just say right now, I love this game. And don't you try to rant about me thinking otherwise. We got Grand Prix, Time Trials, versus Mode. Mode, battle mode and new and exclusive to DS mission mode we'll be going through these one by one so let's start with the basics you start with your basic eight playable characters you know the ones Mario Luigi Bowser Peach then there's four unlockable characters here mm -hmm. one of which being the classic NES accessory Rob I know there's some people that aren't fans of his inclusion because he's not a real Mario character or whatever but if it's somehow okay to have Link Villager and Facts. A Mario Kart then Facts. I think ROV is a worthy addition as well personally I like him a lot the other yes. is dry bones for all those edge lords out there it's a good selection of characters and most of the character models look good for DS. What? Did you just call them edge lords? Did you just call dry bones? Personally, I like them a lot. The other newcomers, dry bones for all those edge lords out there. It's bro, shut your characters. mouth, bro. Dry bones the best character. Emphasis on most. Bowser's got his face stuffed with pound cake, and the big M himself looks like total ass. He looks fine in Mario 64 DS, and that was a launch title. So who knows what happened here? The game in general just has inconsistent visuals. The courses look great for DS, all of them really. But then you have stuff like the Koopa shells, which are literally just a stationary paper cutout. I understand the DS doesn't have much memory to spare, and making each item a 3D model may have been too taxing on the hardware. But for fuck's sake, you can at least animate the sprite. Even the Game Boy Mario Kart did that. Mario Kart 64 did that as well, and that was so well animated. I bet many people didn't even know it was a 2D image. Even still, it's hard to complain too much when the game consistently yes. runs at a solid 64. Portable content. So if Mario looking like a bootleg carnival toy was the price to pay, then I think that's a fair concession. After all, fluence racing should be the primary focus on a kart racer. This is as nitpicky as it gets, but while we're on the subject, of graphics. I thought I mentioned this because it even bothered me as a kid. I'm not here to give you guys a damn science lesson, but in short, the color of fire in most situations directly translates to its temperature. Fire that is blue is much hotter than fire that is red. In fact, okay. the color of stars is how astronomers determine how hot a star is. So in Double Dash, the color of drifting sparks goes from yellow to red to finally blue. The implication, I thought, was that the sparks your wheels are kicking up are getting hotter while you maintain a drift. But ever since DS, it goes from blue to red. Why? Then in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, they really screwed things up by making it go from blue to red and then back to purple again this is such a whatever thing it doesn't really matter but it bugged me for years and now i hope it'll bug you so it goes from blue orange purple never noticed that i think because blue is not the really dominant col uh, color and then the purple also isn't really dominant I don't know, whatever, I'm not Nintendo, I don't design games. 100% the game. You can even use any cart you want, regardless of what character- Bro, I remember Check that card! If you 100% could, you could play as a whole game. fucking crane, bro! A tank, even! Look! It's a whole fucking... Digger, bro! What? It's a whole digger! Or whatever they're called, bro. What? But I swear they got the stats on virtually every car mixed up. Take Luigi, for example. His cart, the Streamliner, is a speedy looking race car. That's the one with low stats and good items. Meanwhile, his damn vacuum is the fast one. Or of course it is. He has an old fashioned drag car, and that's the slow one with good items. Meanwhile, this big ass egg, that's the one of good stats and bad items. Of course. Or Waluigi's excavator, that's the fast one. Not his bike, but his damn construction vehicle. Of course. No, you know Mario's cart, the B Dasher, front of the box, super iconic. That's the slow one. But this dumb looking star car, yeah, that's it's a good. star. <laughs> Once again, it's obvious. Not a deal, obviously, I just thought it was funny. But as far as the racing itself, it feels really good. DS was basically the game that established what a Mario Kart game should feel like. I say this because Next. every Mario Kart game that preceded DS feels more similar to how this game feels than it does, say, 64 or Double Dash. Mm -hmm. When it comes to multiplayer, this is one of the more skill based Mario Karts. It's the last in the series to have the original drift for one. You know, back when you had to build up your drip by wobbling a d-pad back and forth? This was also the game that added conventional drafting. It was technically in 64, but in the same way that drifting was technically in 64. It just didn't feel right until DS put its foot down and it was like... Okay, listen here, you goobers. This is how it's done. 
<laughs> I would be remiss not to mention another high skill tech that was frequented online. That technique in question being snaking, which, if I had to guess, is why they removed the original drifting style in future titles. Yeah. Snaking, for those who aren't familiar, is when you quick drift in alternating directions in a straight line. It can be tricky to pull off, but if you do it successfully, it should be in the game. Driving straight thanks to a small burst of speed. The point is, Mario Kart DS is one of the more technical entries, and I respect that. That being said, we're talking about the racing mechanics here, because the item balancing a DS is complete bollocks. Honestly, when it comes to bullshit item balancing, this and the Wii version are easily the most sporadic. It's not as bad as Wii. Incredible <laughs> credit is due. There isn't a stupid amount of rubber banding like there was in Wii. In fact, if it wasn't for the items, this would easily be the fairest Mario Kart. Most of the bullcrap comes from a particular spiny shell, but I should probably mention the blooper first. Everyone's favorite item. This <laughs> is the game the item premiered in and... Okay, can we just be real for a sec? How come out of all the items they have removed, it's the blooper that stayed? Mario Kart Wii added the Mega Mushroom, and I thought that was cool. Mega no, Mushroom was that sick. That never came back. Guess what did though? The blooper. Bloopers for anyone who hasn't played a Mario Kart in the past 10 years is an item that covers your screen with ink. It doesn't slow you down or anything. It's all artificial. There is no happy medium of bloopers. Either it's trash. your whole screen black, or it's like how it is in Wii, where it hardly matters. Plus, they don't have a perceivable effect on computers. I think you see them swerve left to right a little on straights, but that's about it. If they want to keep bloopers but give them a more tangible effect, they should spray your tires with ink, making you slip more. I know people would still complain about them being annoying, but firstly, it would be no more annoying than not being able to see your damn screen. And two, at least it wouldn't feel useless when you got the item yourself. Transitioning to the other items here. I don't know if this was supposed to happen, but I really appreciate this design choice if it was. I had a triple banana behind me, and then when I got chased by a red shell, I lost all of them. This what? might sound like a bad design choice, but I think it's smart and here's why. No, me no, no, no. roommates used to play Mario Kart Wii all the time. No, 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 you did, you did, no, no, no. here's why. You, didn't you see that shit, bro? This design choice if it was. You got hit I by the side of it. Behind me. So actually it's a really well designed concept because the hitboxes actually matter unlike in the future installments where they don't and then when I got look, look, look hold on oh, oh oh you see which one goes look he's almost reaching you and oh there you go there they all go because he reached you on the sides I lost all of them. This might sound like a bad design choice, but I think it's smart and here's why. Me oh shit, he's actually agreeing with Mario me. Kart Wii all the time. And basically, if someone got into first and had a triple banana, that was it. There was no way in hell you'd pass them because by the time you got three red shots, he actually agreed with me. Never mind. <laughs> got another triple banana. But with this, triple bananas can be used offensively three times, but defensively once. It's way better than that circling banana. No, that's not it. They added that's not true. The items go straight through that shit anyway. That's so trash, bro. I hate uh, that. I hate, least, tree, that being an I hate the three. I hate the three bananas on in uh, my cynical side knows the real in seven, bro, or eight. I mean, as hell in DS. If you hold an item behind you, you would expect not to get hit by a shell, right? Well, that would be some wishful thinking because in many cases the shell will go around your item. Yeah. If my Discord is to be believed, this is an issue in the Wii version as well. I don't remember this in either. Yet, it shouldn't be an issue because it should be logical. Like in this Here in this way, over, right? Over. If you get a hit on the side, you still get a hit, right? So you have to like, you actually have to aim your fucking weapons. I mean, if you can aim your fucking weapons, you can actually do something. Now you just throw it, it's gonna hit, regardless. If you got a banana or shield or whatever, it's not gonna hit. But it's, it will hit something, right? But in this way, if you have, if you can literally uh, hit them when they're like drifting or something, you have to like actually aim and be good at the game, be good in the skill in the game, to actually hurt someone. So you're not always perfectly protected. You always have a chance. And considering Mario Kart is a game full of fucking RNG, a little bit of skill is appreciated to be honest. And that's a problem when how many blue shells you get hit with is 100% random. Yup, it's time to talk about these boys. These are seriously the one thing I distinctively remember from DS. Yeah, they were, were blue horrible. Up the ass. Don't be surprised if you get hit by three of these before your race is over. There was one race where four of them popped up and in a situation where everyone is neck and neck, AKA, it's not impossible to overtake first. There should never be a chance for one to pop up. I don't think I'm alone when I say these should only pop up when a single red shell just won't 
cut it when overtaking the lead. I'm actually one of the few people that doesn't mind the blue shell's inclusion and moderation, but they shouldn't be popping up right before the finish line. They are especially a problem in Rainbow Road because if you get hit by a blue shell when you're upside down like I did here, you're boned. That's mm -hmm. a huge setback. And obviously you can't control when a blue shell is going to hit you. So it feels slightly unfair. Ironically, the DS Rainbow Road would be great in Mario Kart 8 with its anti-gravity because there, being hit upside down wouldn't behave any differently. I suppose that's my cue to start talking about the tracks. While it's not the best selection of courses- No, 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 you were getting a fact, huge a item, bro. The fake item blocks. Those were fantastic, bro. Those were so cool. They were so good. Fucking item blocks, because you can just put it in a existing item block, and whenever someone tries to get the item block, you get hit because if it's a fake one inside of it. It was brilliant. It was amazing. I screwed up so many people because of that. Bring it back. Bring that shit back. But there's some real classics here. Delfino Plaza. Delfino Plaza. Let's go. Fortress are pretty solid as well. Air all air supports. Yes. House track and eight. Peach Gardens is a Peach Gardens one of my gonna... personal faves. And DS happens to have one of the best Bowser Castle maps. Yes. However, we need to address the elf in the room. Not everyone will be happy with this, but please try to hear me out. <sighs> Waluigi Pinball. I don't think it's the perfect map people praise it to be. <laughs> Let's look at what it did right not. first. Theming. To begin with, that song slaps hard. It it's fun. It's a fun map, but it's not perfect. It's that good. <laughs> then there's the fact that it's on a pinball table. That's an extremely unconventional setting for a racetrack. The visuals are awesome. I really love the foggy spotlights illuminating the night sky. The sound effects are great too. It's the only map where they're different. There are some satisfying little jingles when you overtake another racer. Mm -hmm. the item roulette sounds different. Yep. It's a lot of and details. The signifier sound effect is all 8 bit. All that stuff is what people think about when Waluigi Pinball comes to mind. And it's all great stuff. That being said, the other half of what makes up a track is the layout itself. This is where Waluigi Pinball starts to flounder. For a map called Waluigi Pinball, there's certainly not a whole lot of time spent on the pinball table. Yeah, just the last eight seconds, really. And even then, what are you doing? Just driving straight, mostly. Maybe crossing your fingers a surprise pinball doesn't hit you from behind, but otherwise you're only driving in a direct line to the gutter of the table. As for the rest of the map, all we have here is your basic run-of-the-mill linear concrete pathing. Not only are there are no shortcuts or branching paths here but this has absolutely nothing to do with pinball you do realize a pinball a pinball track or field or whatever is not that big can't have a whole fucking race on the thing also with this criteria fucking baby park is the most horrible fucking track in the game is this let's be honest i don't i don't i don't know bro i, don't, I think you're too harsh bro like we, we've got worse all right, we have we have gotten worse tracks in the in the future, bro. Like that new fucking sweet mountain whatever map that came out in in wave two, bro. Shit's trash. It's trash, bro. It's just a circle. <coughs> it just you go circle, bro. Nothing. There's nothing interesting in that track. This is this is a brilliant track. It's actually fun. But if that's the case, then what the hell is that? Waluigi Pinball is a perfectly fine track. But if it wasn't for the mere idea of driving on a giant pinball table, I don't think this map would have been elevated to the god tier status it holds today. Waluigi deserves a better pinball inspired map if you ask me. Honestly, they could have just taken the pinball portion of the track and made it into a decent battle map. As mentioned earlier, Ooh. DS was the first game to have retro tracks and well, it certainly feels like it. I have a lot of respect for DS for essentially trying to double the number of tracks we came to expect in each game. But the best of the best these are not. I swear they went out of their way to pick the least interesting callbacks. If I were to take the GameCube tracks, for example, and pick out my favorite eight, essentially cutting the list in half, these would be the ones. Daisy Cruiser, Waluigi Stadium, Ooh. Mushroom City, Yoshi Circuit, DK Mountain, Wario Coliseum, DK Dino, Mountain Jungle, was he... and Bowser Castle. Out of those eight, only one is back in DS. That map in question being Yoshi Circuit, which has been stripped down significantly. The piranhas and the pipes are gone, and so is that secret passage in the side of the mountain. I of oh. course understand not everyone is going to have the same favorite tracks as me but who the hell was begging for luigi's circuit to come back no it one seems to be a theme of the retro tracks in ds they picked the maps that would likely be the easiest to recreate despite yeah. if they were fan favorites or not if i were to pick the simplest tracks to recreate from double dash the four we see in ds would also be the four i would pick going back to the example i gave of yoshi circuit even among the most basic picks many of these are still stripped down mushroom bridge for example remember how cool it was when you could drive on the side of the bridge mm -hmm. well that's gone now yep. also can we talk about how many of the courses in ds are plain ass circuits Figure 8 Circuit, Mario 
Mario Circuit, Mario Circuit 1, Peach Circuit, Luigi Circuit, Luigi Circuit GameCube, and Yoshi Circuit. That's a lot of tracks that are just your basic raceways. I'm yep. not trying to come down too hard on DS for all this, because clearly it stands out in other areas. In fact, we have yet to get to my favorite parts of Mario Kart DS, so don't worry. And to be fair, I didn't even notice this as a kid. I just bring it up because, again, I played this game non-stop when I was younger, so mm -hmm. I only think it's fair to analyze each Mario Kart with my rose-tinted goggles off. Besides, they had to start somewhere. Credit where credit is due. This was the first game of Retro Tracks, so perhaps it's harsh of me to be this critical on their first attempt. It's also likely these reservations were made because of the space limitations on a DS cartridge. Either way, by the time the Wii version came, nah, bro, they like, got their this this critique is valid. It is valid for simply the fact like they might have did could have done a better job. But if you see whatever the fuck, you no. Know, current mario kart is doing i don't i'm not a big fan of this whole fucking course selection bro like the new tracks the only the only ones that, were, that are fun and good are the ones that came from tour and were like fan favorites on ds like the new one is trash yeah i, I can't even remember the other ones that's how that's how trash they are like i know the the, the tour ones right like um australia right got new york um and we had one more paris right and we got two japanese maps one one is of, uh, original i think yeah but that was trash that was trash i did not like it no they should just uh, get these better tracks that they made back when they were like you know actually creative and with their tracks like like this one bowser's castle n64 was crazy bro bullet Fort fortress or whatever that was crazy bro the rainbow road in ds was crazy like there's so many good maps on DS that they still haven't put in the game, right? Like, they had so much, and double, like he said, Double Dash is a lot of good games. N64 still has a lot of fucking good tracks. Uh, the Weavers has good fucking tracks, but they don't put them in, bro. Where Koopa Cape at, bro? Where Koopa Cape? After collecting my complete thoughts on the game, it became pretty obvious that Strong Suit is not the racing mode. The racing is still tons of fun, of course. I played it endlessly as a kid, and I love how technical the mechanics feel compared to the sequels. But compared to what we've seen recently, the battle mode and mission modes are so much better than any non-racing offerings in the new Mario Karts that it outshines the heart of DS itself. Well, how about you say we get into the good stuff? Let's talk about battle mode. Battle mode in DS is awesome. We got two modes here. Let's Remember that you have to blow on your Blue fucking DS to, used to be. blow up you know, Balloon. None of that you can't die, bullcrap. Here it's last man standing. As it should be. I like how you have to blow up the balloons of your mic. You only start with a single balloon, so you have to choose I how can, you want to blow I up. I wanna know how reserve. much fucking you might be asking why the hell when you slow them up all right away. Fucking and the answer is a less DS right item, now. the better items you get. A really cool risk reward element I'm shocked has never come back since DS. Then there's also Shine Runners. Not to get confused with Shine Thief from GameCube or 8 Deluxe. I love Shine, Shine Runners was amazing. I might like Shine Runners even more. It has an elimination aspect to it i really like King so Hill type beat. is the game starts of several shine sprites scattered throughout the map you try to collect as many as you can and you can attack other players with items to steal theirs if mm -hmm. you have the least amount of shines or if you're tied with the players that have the least amount of shines when the timer hits zero you're out of the game it's such a fantastic mode and it's yet again something that never left a ds version seriously they should just get rid of coin runners and replace it with this that's all coin runners is anyway it's just shine runners without the elimination aspect in other words shine runners without the thing that made it great so battle mode is pretty dang good my only complaint is a variety of stages and that's not to say the battle maps are bad in fact they're all good well maybe with the exception of palm shore which yeah is this one nah. to beach levels everywhere i absolutely adore beach themed stages but three piles of sand and a palm tree come on nintendo you can do better than that the giant ds is awesome twilight that was easy yeah i hate twilight house i like twilight house but i respect your opinion oh fuck the problem is they're also open. These maps don't provide any way Wait, to escape. Wait, Twilight House? Hey, Twilight. Come on, Nintendo. You can do better than that. The giant DS is awesome. Twilight House is cool. Twilight House? Bro, I don't remember ever playing that one. What the fuck? I hate Twilight House. I like Twilight House, but I respect your opinion. Oh. <laughs>
The problem is they're also open. These maps don't provide anywhere to escape players or items. There's nothing wrong with an open map, but variety is important. Nintendo DS is wide open, Palm Shore is wide open, Tartop as well. It's just a circle arena. Even Pipe Plaza is debatably an open map. The only two stages of any sort of complexity are Twilight House and Block Fort from Nintendo 64. That just goes to show you how good battle mode is in Mario Kart DS though. The map variety is lacking, and it's still the best battle mode in any of the games. The other hard hitter in Mario Kart DS is- Nations, bro. This Those are fun. fantastic. Since we never saw missions return, this almost feels like a- Yo, you know what- open. You know what, what this reminds me of? If everyone, anyone, like, uh, played, like, um, Diddy Kong Racing? That's this, bro! Like, you got, like, this big-ass Goomba right here, right? Like, that's the fucking shit with, uh, Diddy Kong Racing, bro. Did they come out- wait. When did they- when- hold on. 1990? It's older than me?! Yo, they did, they did pull it out of fucking Diddy Kong Racing, bro, because look at this. You have like this big ass Goomba, that's what, that's what the Diddy Kong Racing had to do. But you also could fly and you had like a boat. Bro, Diddy Kong Racing looks better even. God, it's can't, did I really, did I really got the right one though? Like, Diddy Kong Racing, 1997? Ah, oh, here it is, yeah, it's 2007. <laughs> I was about to say, bro, that makes no sense. How does Diddy Kong Racing look better than fucking Mario Kart, bro? But that's that's where they got the ID from, bro. Diddy Kong Racing. Which they should make a they should make a new one. Or remake it. I don't give a fuck, bro. I would I would I would remake I would play a remake, bro. Diddy Kong Racing was fucking fantastic, bro. It was such a fun racer. And also you got these missions, you have this hub world where you can just fly around. Bro, you could like customize your cars. Like, shit was madness, bro. It's crazy. For kid. Hey guys, the new Mario Kart's gonna have boss fights and special missions and stuff. We'll not. We'll so. And yet, it must be real because here I am playing it. Missions range from beating a drunk driver in a red cart to the finish line to blowing up plant guys in the desert. There's a decent amount of diversity here in regards to the task you're presented with. For me, the highlight was always the bosses. Once you complete all eight other missions, wait a minute. You unlock. For me, the highlight was always the boss. This, this, this is an Odyssey boss. This is a Mario Odyssey boss, bro. Two hands with like things in the palms that you have to hit. Wow. That's cool. Bosses. Once you complete all eight other missions in a world, you unlock the boss. The sound design when their stage appears is so badass and eerie. That shit scared me, bro. I don't play Mario Kart anymore. He's getting kind of scared. The atmosphere during these battles are great. Really, the bosses are just awesome. They're all uniquely their own, and they even have their own theme stages. Speaking of which, you know how I was saying the battle maps could have used a bit more variety? Well, the map you fight King Boo on isn't too complicated, but it also provides places to avoid items with King Boo was so hard, bro. Advantage points for campers. He Honestly, was so they tough. Could have just swapped out either that beach map or top tart with this arena, and it would have made for a more well-rounded stage selection. It only verifies just how much effort went to these missions. A simple little stage that only exists as a boss arena for King Boo is better than some of the actual battle maps. One of the coolest things about mission mode is once you complete World 6, you think you're all done. The credits roll and everything. Then when you go back to improve your score in some of the missions, you notice that. Level 7. Folks, there's a 7th secret world. If this game was just a six worlds, I would have been happy. But seven worlds. Yep. There's a lot of content here. In all, including bosses, there are 63 missions to endure as a package. It's all interesting enough that I did it all in one sitting. Totally not advised, but I can confirm it will keep your interest. When people <laughs> think of Mario Kart DS, what usually comes to mind seems to be the multiplayer. Specifically yeah. the download play. And I can totally contest to that. One of my fondest gaming memories ever is going to some family reunion when I was a kid. I didn't know a goddamn person there. But at some point during the Night, me and all the other kids there realized we all had Nintendo DS's. Next thing you knew, there was five of us all playing Mario Kart Battle Mode on Download Play. Download Play was the shit, bro. Like, Picto Chat was amazing as well. Don't get me wrong, but Download Play, bro? You you were like, yo, hey, I got this new game. You want to play with? Yeah, sure. Let me just grab my DS and just play with you. No need to buy the whole game because he had the game. All he, all he needed was a DS, the console itself, and the person with the game. That's it. That's that. That's that's not a thing anymore. So dumb. Like I was, uh, like, 
a bit ago, right? I wanted to play like with five people Mario Kart, right? And we all had like these, we all had like, uh, we had two switches, right? My, my, my sister had one and we have one. Um, and, and we want to play with five people for Mario Kart. You have to have Mario Kart. You both have to have Mario Kart for that shit. That shit is ridiculous. That's stupid, bro. Absolutely ludicrous that you have to buy both games to play it with each other. Nintendo been getting greedier and greedier, bro. It works. It just worked. You were like, well, get my DS, download play. Wait a minute. You hear the, like the, the little, um, little OSD playing where you're like downloading shit and you know, then it pops up. You're like, oh, that's like, that's like the most dopamine induced shit in my childhood, bro. The moment that shit pops up and you click on it. Oh, amazing. I also loved how you could draw an emblem for everyone you race against to see. Yeah, this game had an emblem maker. Once more, another feature that never came back. Yep. I love customization options like this, even as niche as it may seem. As I said before, this was the first Mario Kart game of Wi-Fi races. And as far as I'm concerned, the earliest first party Nintendo title to really nail the online. The Wi-Fi was so good, in fact, there still exists some fan servers that are still online today. Shout out to Doc XT for- Wait, 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 what? In fact, there's the earliest was the- YFC match. YFC. What is YFC? I never knew that. First, Mario Kart game of Wi-Fi races. And as far as I'm concerned, the earliest first party Nintendo title to really nail the online. The Wi-Fi was so good, in fact, there still exists some fan servers that are still online today. Shout out to Doc XD for letting me know. Until he expounded on the Discord, I thought he was just trying to say Wi-Fi and then his cat started to tap dance on his keyboard. Ooh, oh. The best part, you don't even need to use mods to use it. Or at least... Theoretically, I couldn't get my DS to connect to my Wi-Fi network. I don't know what to say. Just wouldn't work. I even tried using my smartphone as a hotspot, and that didn't work either. I'm sure it works just fine for others. But mm. I can't really comment on it much myself if I can't try it out. Personally, I don't think I'm missing out on much, though. Because I was there when the official servers were up. Those are some fond memories. Probably for the best, I can't taint them by getting my ass handed to me in the online nowadays. Because anyone still going through all this hassle to place a Mario Kart DS online is unquestionably going to be damn experience. Yeah. Whoa. Bro, I even like that map. Doom Desk or so, Dry Mario Desert. Mario DS was a great game then, and it's still a great game now. Outside Muppet Face Mario, most everything here has aged pretty well. As far as my handful of critiques are concerned, well, those are always minor problems. It's not like time made them worse. Nevertheless, clearly all my nitpicks are just that. Nitpicks. Because in the grand scheme of things, it was a lot of fun revisiting this entry. Not to mention, this is easily the Mario Kart I've dumped the most hours into. There are a few hiccups, but so what? Every Mario Kart has some rough patches. When it comes to analyzing the series, I find people rely too heavily on their nostalgia to determine which one is the best. Basically, if it's the entry in the series people fondly remember playing the most, that's automatically the best one. Some people <laughs> will even go as far as to say a specific entry dominates on all fronts and has zero problems. As far as I'm concerned, that has yet to happen. No game in a series is perfect but likewise i think there the Wii version was fun because it was so Kurt. fucking it hard bro strip, but uh this just came out so uh <laughs> now i suppose that statement's up for debate so wait what mario kart ds so uh downright bad mario kart no game in a series is perfect but likewise i think there has yet to be a downright bad mario kart hey this is a bit of a late update to the script but uh this just came out so uh <laughs> now i suppose that statement's up for debate so is Mario, ah, Mario Kart Tour is fun. No, but it's pretty damn close given the They're going to get rid of the whole the gotcha mechanic as well, I've is heard. Is this the best Mario Kart? And I don't know, simply because I don't think I have one. Every game has something it excels at. For DS, it's the battle and mission modes. For those two things alone, I'd say Mario Kart DS is still worth playing today. While I may not have a favorite, Mario Kart DS is one of my favorites. It reinforced what the words Mario Kart meant to gamers all around the world, and its impact won't be forgotten anytime soon. This was so sick, bro. This ending. Who won, like, the whole Grand Prix fucking shit. Got this gem. Thanks for watching. Okay. Yeah. Man. This shit was great, bro. Oh. Bomberman, bro? Yo. Bro, don't, don't get me all started on Bomberman, bro. Don't even get me started on Bomberman. That shit is crazy, bro. I remember playing that shit so much. That's insane. Not even funny how insane that is.